No. The answer to the question in the title of this video is no. ChatGPT is not going to change computer science classes forever, and let me explain why. It might be a stupid answer to you, but I think it makes sense. First of all, let's just ask it to implement a stack in Python. This is something that you would typically get a beginner in a computer science class to do in their data structures and algorithms class, something they typically do in their first or second year of university. And as we can see, well, let's find out if it actually does it right. But in my experience, it's done it well so far. And it seems to be doing it right. It's just using Python's built-in list and built-in list functions to implement a stack class. Um, and stacks are not very hard to implement, so it's very easy to verify that it's doing it well. And it seems to be doing it right. And it also outputs some example code to see how it does it. And it's like, yeah, you know, you push the items onto the stack and you print whatever's in the stack. And it seems to be doing it correctly. Even if it's not, I don't care because that's not exactly the point. The point that I'm going to be trying to make in this video is that ChatGPT isn't breaking anything that's already broken. And let me explain. ChatGPT and GitHub Copilot, which is another code generation AI tool that you can use, and in my opinion, much better than ChatGPT for the process of writing code, but that's a topic and a video for another day. Both of those have allowed students to more easily cheat than they could have before. And let me explain. So data structures and algorithms classes and most beginner programming classes they're all very template folks. They're very, what's the word? It's just very easy to do them because, oh yeah, boilerplate. That's the word I was looking for. They're very filled with boilerplate. You're given a lot of boilerplate code and then you just have to fill in a few functions. Even here, a stack class, you would be given this, you know, you'd probably have your initial, you'd have most of these methods be done or some of these methods be filled out for you and you would have to fill in the rest of the methods because that makes it easier for the auto graders to check it. It makes it easier for the TAs and professors to grade your work. Now that leads to bad learning qualities and outcomes for students. In my opinion, if you're just filling out boilerplate code, it's going to be easy to just copy paste and Google and cheat that way. It's just, you just Google what you have to implement. There's only so many ways to ask somebody to implement a heap. So you Google the answer, you copy paste it, change the variables, change the for loops a little bit, and boom, you're done. You got an A, you got a hundred, and you're feeling good. So ChatGPT and GitHub Copilot in that sense aren't changing anything at all. And you may or may not agree with me. You may say, hey, this is making it easier for people to cheat. But to that, I would say people that wanted to cheat anyways were probably already cheating. And this isn't really going to introduce more people to cheating, or at least not that many more people. And there's a few ways that I think universities could fix this. One, it's put less of an effort or less of an emphasis, sorry, on boilerplate coding assignments. Things like these are not going to be great learning outcomes for students. Uh, and I get it, right? Data structures and algorithms classes are meant to be focused on problem solving and improving students' problem solving abilities. So why not make these assignments a little bit harder, but worth a little bit less of your grade so it takes a little bit of pressure off of students? Make the assignments harder. You can't just directly copy paste it. There's a few layers of abstraction that the students have to think about, come up with and solve them themselves. Another thing that might be done is make collaboration between students allowed on certain assignments. I don't know about uni your university, but my university at Georgia Tech, most coding assignments uh, for like data structures classes, they're individual. And that makes sense, especially when these assignments that we're given are not difficult. They're pretty, they're pretty boilerplate. -y. So making them individual assignments makes sense. But with the advent of things like ChatGPT and GitHub Copilot, students that, you know, that don't even have other friends to talk to, for lack of a better description, if you don't even have friends, you can technically collaborate with other people with ChatGPT and GitHub Copilot. And students are going to be doing this whether professors want to or not. There's no real way to dedicate to detect whether somebody used ChatGPT or GitHub Copilot if they've been doing it all semester, because although the code is trained on a you know a bunch of code that's been on the internet most of the time i don't think it's like plagiarism or i don't think it looks plagiarized like it technically might be plagiarism based on your definition but the code that it outputs isn't necessarily immediately detectable with saying hey you directly copy pasted that and especially not in this case right because what else is there that it's just so so short that there's nothing else you can really do and with github copilot it usually attunes the code that it outputs to the code that's in the rest of the file so that makes it even easier then or easier for the person cheating and harder for people trying to detect that they're cheating. And I know I've been rambling in this video because it's unscripted, but my main point here is that ChatGPT is not going to make it easier for people to cheat. Well, it's made it easier for people to cheat, but it's not going to dramatically change coding classes. Computer science classes to combat this 
and really drill down those problem solving skills that they claim that these data structures and algorithms classes are for, need to change the way that they serve assignments. They need to change the way that they lecture and they need to pr put more of an emphasis on the problem solving rather than uh, you know necessarily the grades that are attached to paltry easy assignments like these because chat gpt is not going away students are going to continue to use this and the other resources that they have available to them so to save everybody a lot of headache allow students to use chat gpt or github copilot well maybe not chat gpt maybe allow them to use github copilot actually use chat gpt too but just make it so that these assignments are more difficult and to even come up with an answer or a prompt to give to ChatGPT, you have to think of a solution first. So even if they can't, you know, come directly implement their code, their solution in code, that's fine because they get that help from TAs and professors anyways, right? Like implementation help you can get from TAs. So ask them to come up with solutions to hard problems. And then if they use ChatGPT to come up with the implementation details for those solutions, that's fine. I don't see what the problem is there. You're not really testing syntax, you're testing problem solving ability. So why not just do that, right? That seems like it's a win-win for everybody. I don't know. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. This was rambly. I just thought about this today. And I know I'm a little bit late to the whole chat GPT thing, but that's fine, whatever. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, leave a comment talking about how you would fix things, whether you think chat GPT is gonna be helpful, for you, helpful to you in your side projects. And if it's not, tell me why. And I think Copilot's better anyway, so that might be why. But anyways, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Hit that subscribe button, share it with some, a friend who wants to see it, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.